Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. And I hope you enjoyed the office park and the baseball stadium build from last time. This office park is, yeah, working out really nicely. The floods of Sims just blowing up here. You'll come out of the train station down here. You can see a little parade of them coming in now and flood up here. And on down through the little path cutway down here between our keys and on into this district. It's pretty bad, actually. The walkability in this area is looking pretty good. I hope you enjoyed that. Now for today, we're actually going to be heading out of the main downtown city of Oradon. I don't know if it's called Oradon County or not. I'll let you guys kind of decide. But we're going to be heading right out over here to this little bit of land here. And we're going to be starting a brand new town. Now the idea for this came from Dom Robinson, who dropped it in the comments a few weeks back, um, about having a commuter style town for the city. So what we're going to be doing is having a historic town centre with lots of new build housing estates around it. And that's really because of its proximity to the city. So a massive focus is going to be on good public transport links here to get them fast into the city, into those jobs, and like really making it a realistic commuter town. So for today, we're going to be focusing on just the road layout for this, and then we will be building in and around it over the coming episodes as well. But really, I just want to focus on how you should plan out a road network for a brand new town. So thinking really about those highway connections, transport links, and then the main big assets that are going to bring traffic to them within the town. So thank you so much for that suggestion, Dom, and I hope I can bring it to life for you. Okay, so the first thing that I do want to do is lay out our main collectors for it. Now, clearly, we've got a highway route running all the way down here, which will bring in nice connections for it. We also have a highway up this side, which I would like to connect to as well, so that we've got multiple options for our town. And we also have this collector that flows right down across the highway and into the main collector, kind of somewhat of an arterial, actually, that runs all the way through Oradon, right from Woodhaven, all the way through into the downtown. So there's already some pretty good connections set up around here. So what we want to do is hook our new town into that. So to start off with, we will grab our four lane road with a nice grass medium, I think, for this. We'll go for no parking for this area, I think. So what I want to do is bring it nice and straight out of here just for a little bit. And I kind of bring it probably up to around about the edge of these trees, actually. We're going to have to clear the trees out in just a second. So might get some trees on the road just for a minute. And then if I just turn on our height map so we can check out that terrain height, we've got this big bump coming around the middle here. So I do want to try and avoid that as much as possible and kind of make sure that this main collector is pretty smooth as we travel on through here. So I'm going to bring this round in a nice bend like this. And then we're actually going to follow this contour line around for a little bit. Just trying to keep that really nice and smooth here. And we'll bring it out like that. And then actually, instead of following it, what I am going to do is bring it out completely straight. And this is going to be bumpy as anything going over this hill here. But it is something that we can fix later on. So let's bring that out straight like so. And then what we will do is bend it around so we can go over this river. So let's bring it up to just this point here for now. And then we'll go into a raised segment. Bring that across the river. And I'm going to turn collision off because we will need to make this bridge higher to cross here accurately and leave all of our lovely detailing that Eggsy has put into the map there intact. So we'll just do it like that for now. And then we are going to bring it into a highway intersection over this side. Now, of course, trees on the road, as mentioned. Let's, of course, delete those off. That's just where we've turned collision off there. The rest of the road should be absolutely fine, yeah. So before we come on to the intersection, let's make sure that this bridge <laughs> actually makes sense. So this is not looking good right now. Now, I'm not expecting ferries or anything to pass through here, so it's not like we need a super duper tall bridge. But let's raise this up a little bit so that it looks just a little bit nicer and more natural crossing it. I don't think it would be quite that low to the water in reality. So, yeah, let's do it like that. And then what I will do is just to give us a slightly more gentle slope. Let's slope these sections here so that that's a little bit nicer coming down the hill this side. And then we'll also actually do the same thing here. And give ourselves a bit more of a slope. We'll have a little small banked section coming up to the main bridge here. Um, and I think that that looks relatively neat. And we've still obviously got our rocks intact there. So now before we come onto the highway interchange, I do just want to sort out the other collectors that are going to be flowing through this town. So this is essentially going to be the main high-speed ring road. We are not going to zone at all along this road. 
This is going to be easy access from one side of the town to the other. And actually what we are going to do is have a series of roundabouts on it in which people can come off from their exits. And the town that I've actually been looking at a lot for this is actually Salisbury. Got a very old town centre and a lot of new housing estates built out around it. Now this isn't going to be quite as big as Salisbury, but it is going to be a pretty big, reasonably sized town here. So from this point, what I would like to do is just bring out a road here that we can essentially take through our main town centre. So I'm actually just going to bend it very, very slightly here and then bring it out straight like this. And this will kind of form the backbone of our town centre. Town centre will really sit right through there. And then we're going to bend it again and bring it down into an intersection over here. I think like that will do nicely. Then what we want to do is also bring a collector out that is going to connect on up to the highway over here and into this road network this side as well so there are multiple routes for people to travel we don't want to funnel everyone down this collector we want people to be able to get onto the highway nice and easily here to get into the main city into the downtown that way and also obviously our highway connection from this side bringing people from outside the city into this area too so not just via this intersection this side they've got multiple choices and multiple options to go down and that really, really helps with traffic flow in the long run. So with this, I'm just going to bring it out in a curve up this way. And we need to get across this railway. And I'm thinking what I will do is actually dip the railway underneath this main collector. So we'll just go over like that for now. And then we are going to bring it up this way. Now we do have this junction here, which we could essentially make into a four way. But actually what I'm thinking is we'll probably create a smaller junction around about here which we will come back to, I think, another time. But what I would like to do is respect some of the landscaping on this map already. We're going to follow this big empty space around this side to produce like a nice smooth line into here, just like that. And what I will do, because I'm not expecting huge amounts of infrastructure to be built along this road either, I am actually, we're going to turn collision back on for this. <laughs> Why not? It'll help us get rid of our trees. I'm actually going to turn this into a main national road here. So let's use this one. This one does have street lights. Yes, that's good news. That's what I wanted to see. We're going to upgrade this all the way back to most of the railway lines. We'll do it up to there for now. That is essentially like a highway. They're going to be going almost as fast as a highway on that road. Just travelling down up to meet this collector by Auridan over here by David Schott Glassworks. And they can easily get onto the highway. They can then join this collector as well, which can then take them on into the downtown, into the main city. So there are, again, multiple options here. And as mentioned, I think it would be useful to eventually bring out another road here onto another highway junction this side, but we will probably do that at a later date. Let's just clear out some of these trees before we move on too much further. Okay, so that kind of lays out, lays out our main collector networks, I think, there. And again, we also have this road here, which this will be filled out with more suburbs around this area um, and potentially a little bit more here. And then we'll have a big, big open space before we eventually hit this town over this side. So there will be a bit of suburbs built out here, maybe extending over this side of the highway as well, generally around this area. area. So it'll be quite a substantially sized town, but obviously nowhere near as big as our main city there. But again, that we can feed out when we start to build those suburbs out there, because at the moment they've, they've got this connection. But again, that will just give them another option for getting around, which is what we want to see. Multiple options for getting to each place. OK, now let's just put in our roundabouts before we get too much further. So we'll definitely grab our three lane road with no parking for this. And we'll get this in nicely here. So let's make it a tiny bit smaller, I think. And we'll just add that in with Roundabout Builder. And then exactly the same thing over this side as well for this junction. And of course, let's not forget to set that up with Traffic Manager. And also use a little bit of Node Controller here to make these nice and smooth. We've got a node very, very close to this junction, which we do not want. That will impact your traffic. Make sure you get rid of those. Yeah, we'll just extend these out a little bit to give ourselves some nice smooth bends there. And of course, we can come in with a bit of IMT, which we will do during the detailing. And we'll do exactly the same thing over here. OK, so before we come onto our internal road network, what I do want to do is go ahead and build this intersection. I'm going to build a Pelican intersection actually here, which is not one that I've tried before, certainly not one in Oridan already. So we will go ahead and do that in a quick time lapse and I'll be right back.
so there we go we have our pelican interchange in i think it's worked out quite nicely actually i mean this is a big old loop around but it's all seemingly quite smooth the slopes are quite nice because of actually how the terrain sits around this little section of highway here yeah i think it's worked out quite nicely i haven't got any lampposts poking through the highways as well which is quite easily missed <laughs> And we've added in a bit of intersection marking tool as well into all of these intersections. Of course, use traffic manager to make sure people aren't sneaking across lanes that they shouldn't be. And yeah, hopefully that should do us pretty nicely in terms of traffic. It should keep it all flowing nicely into this roundabout at least. So now let's come on to planning out firstly our town centre layout. And as mentioned, the town centre is going to sit in this section here. But what I do want to do first is just check the terrain because it's all pretty level around this area. However, I really want to level out this section because as you can see from here, it's a bit bumpy. <laughs> and I want to make sure that this is all flat and we get actually quite a nice little sort of cliff edge around this edge of the main collector here, the main through road, this side. Let's go ahead and grab our terrain tools. We'll up our brush size for this and we're going to choose a height from actually from this node here. And we're going to make sure that we have leveled out this whole area. So actually, let's go to a slightly larger brush size for this. We can pull this all back up this way. And I really want this whole section actually to be this height. So we're going to pull it up against the highway this side. Maybe actually we should go a little bit higher with this. Let's take it from there. There we go. We get a bit more of a defined cliff edge now on that side. Then of course we'll make sure this whole town centre area is completely smooth. We'll level out those nodes in just a second. But yeah, we want a nice flat town centre and then we'll have some nice hilly sort of suburbs and the new modern build developments around it can be a bit hillier in that sense. <laughs> but let's go ahead firstly and just grab all of our nodes from this area and we'll make sure that they are the height of this terrain. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty flat on that terrain to me. Now, of course, on this bit, we do need to sort it out here as well. So let's just raise up this section of our collector here. We'll raise it up like that for now. Let's grab the road and of course, let's upgrade it to a raised segment. And I'm hoping that'll be enough clearance for the trains. We've got a train coming here, actually. We can watch and make sure. And that is very tight indeed. <laughs> So let's go ahead and raise this up just a little bit further and I'm going to pause it with the train underneath so we can check the height once it's all through. And this one has got the connection to the overhead wires which are not there on this piece of railway track but I think overall that is okay and the node sits nicely in between the tracks so it should be absolutely fine on both sides. And what we will do as well just to give it a little bit of help is raise up these nodes either side too. So we've got slightly more clearance on the sides there. And in fact, let's go just a tiny bit higher. Okay, and then this side, what we do want to do is slope this out. So we will come out from there and we'll just use the Move It Slope tool so as we're already in Move It. Okay, so just before we come onto the town centre design, let's have a little look at Google Earth so you can see the inspiration that I am using for this. And this is Salisbury in the UK. And you can see this ring road here with the roundabouts situated all on it. So that's the kind of thing that I would like to replicate here with our collector. We'll add another roundabout into that. But yeah, essentially Salisbury is a very old town centre. They actually have a beautiful cathedral over here. I don't know if we'll be replicating that again. We have just put in the cathedral. <laughs> but they've got beautiful parks all over the place. And you can see that, yeah, the historic town centre is here and it's very much made up of wall-to-wall -wall sort of old-looking buildings. Medium density, I'll say, not super high, but some of them could look like some of the European high-density buildings, which is probably what we're going to use around a lot of the town centre, mixed in with some more modern buildings that so it's kind of been updated over time. But yeah, this whole section here is a big market square. It is completely pedestrianised around this area. We also have a small pedestrian mall down this side as well. Multi-story car park, an old cinema in the middle here. Then we've got things like this on the outside, a big supermarket over here with massive car parks. We have got small car parks I would add dotted in around here. So like one there, one here, all around this town centre. So yeah, this is the type of thing that we're going to be replicating. And looking at the roads as well, it's all kind of gridded. It's very much gridded, but they're not perfectly straight. We have got some interesting lines within it. So that again is what we'd want to replicate around our town centre. 
And then as you come out of it, it starts to go into much more modern housing estates. And these have much more interesting layouts, I would add. There is one over here, actually, I'd like to look at in particular, which is a new build housing estate. And it's got some lovely curvy roads to it. So it really moves away from those sharp, straight lined road grids here. Very, very nice designs there. And again, you can see a similar thing over this side with lots of like nice curvy roads going in and out to these suburban designs here. So again, this is what we are going to be using for inspiration. We're not going to be directly replicating it, but we will be using kind of off grids for the main centre, going into much more flowy, modern housing estate designs on the outskirts. We've also got a big leisure centre here as well, I would add, which is definitely something that I would like to add in. So back in Oriden, let's start laying out, we can click play now, our main area in the middle here. And we are going to have a big pedestrianised forecourt to it. So I'm for the moment just going to use the two lane roads with no parking on them. Let's make sure that they are snapped to the ground. We'll make sure all of our snapping is turned on here. And let's bring out a road like, actually do it 21 units like so. And we're going to go 10 units across just to create our grid here. The actual town centre here is going to be relatively straight in the immediate centre. So we'll just bring out some nice grids like this. Go 20 across again here and down this side. And then we are going to vary it up. So we're not going to have equal 10 dimensions all over the place. So we'll actually go 9 units here. And then bring this one up by 20. We'll bring this one all the way across. And in fact we will just meet the road over that side. And we will again over here too. We'll bring this one up this way again here and then instead of nine we're actually going to go for 11 this time over this side so again just varying it up so it's not all completely uniform and straight and a bit boring like that we've got different grid sizes in here and it's all sort of starting to work together quite nicely and then what we will do is bring a road out like this over here again so this can kind of form the basis of our grid turning it into a slightly different pattern this side. We'll bring these two out straight to meet it, meet it and I think we'll probably do a nice park design in the middle of this there. Let's again bring the grid out that side. So this is quite a departure from what we're actually used to seeing in Oridon. All of these straight line grids but around it it will be much more kind of off grids and the such like. So we will come on to that. Okay, now this town centre bit, as mentioned, I do want to be pedestrianised. So let's go ahead and grab our pedestrian rays. And I'm thinking I might use the cobblestones again for this. Just looks a little bit more historical-like. So we will upgrade all of these rays around this section here. And, and we will actually bring one more out this side because I do want to bring the main train station in over here as well. So we want nice, easy walk-in access to that when it comes to it. And I'm going to keep this road here because one thing that does happen in Salisbury as well is the pedestrian kind of area roads, as it were, go up against the main road, which I quite like the look at. So we are going to move these nodes in super, super close here, but just like that so that we get the pedestrian road longing, running alongside the main road this side as well. A little bit of interestingness here where the pedestrian roads stop and the road comes in. So it's not all pedestrianised, just this small section in the middle here. And I think as well we will upgrade this section over here and we'll turn this into a little bit of a kind of open shopping mall area just around that section. A few different shops facing into that road there, quite small and neat. So from here, yeah, I'd like to bring in the train station. So what we're actually going to do is run a road up separate to it like that. So we'll just go like that for now. I'm thinking... Yeah, I'm thinking we will bring out the pedestrian road here so that connects up to the station this side. And then we'll just extend this so it's a slightly longer shopping mall here. And that, again, just helps to break up some of the monotony of the fixed grid this side. So this is the sort of main layout for our town centre. And as mentioned, we do want to put the train station in here. So let's go ahead and plop that in. And actually, even though we've got the nice content creator train stations, they're raised and some of them are a bit big and modern looking. I am actually just going to default to the normal vanilla train station for this. So let's bring that in like that. I'm actually purposefully not going to centralise it to that. I think that makes it sort of somewhat slightly more interesting. Ordinarily I'd line things up perfectly, but I'd actually think rather line the car parking spaces up to this road here rather than having them in that position. And then of course what we do need to do is hook up the rail line. 
So these are all international lines that are flowing down here and we definitely don't want to connect our internal train system into those. So we do have a passenger line that is flowing in here around to the airport. So I think what we will do is bring an extension off that, probably just tunneling underneath this roundabout here and then back onto the land to bring it round into the station this side. Of course, we also have the passenger connection over here, which I think we will bring out a section which is going to run over the railway and down and into here. We are going to have a large forestry industry, I would add, in this area. So again, having a stop in there would also encourage people in this commuter town to be able to work here and then flow on down either directly almost into the downtown via this way. There's actually only one stop that they will stop at, which is in, in the rail yard in our old factory district over here and then straight into the downtown. This way, there's a couple more stops. So they will stop in Pink Lady District, for example, as they come on in. So we'll give them a few options and make sure that they're really well connected from this area. So what I will do for now is just lay out the train line so that we've got it marked within our town area. And then I will actually just hook it up in the detail and time lapse later on. And coming across this side, what I will do is actually bring it almost straight across this track this way. And then we're going to head it on out over in this direction. And again, I'll hook that up when it comes to the detail and time lapse. What it means here is we do want a junction in. Now, this side is where I'm planning on doing quite a large industrial estate, just at the back of the main town centre, quite close to it. And so what I'm thinking here is I'm actually going to level off this section of the ground to this side, and then it gives us quite a nice back to our railway there as well. Let's just bring this down over here. And again, we'll use smooth to make these slopes a lot less steep and kind of blend more into the environment here. But this node on this road, we're going to bring this down quite a tight hill. So let's just drop this down to terrain height like that. And then we're going to slope this up the hill back towards here. And that slope actually, you know, is reasonably steep, but it's not too steep and not unrealistic, I think, for a historical city. So that is what we are going to go for there. Let's, of course, upgrade that train track nicely. And in fact, I think we might actually make this a bridge. I think that will look quite nice over that section as we come down into the industrial area. Let's go ahead and grab this road and we'll just continue to bring this one out straight like this. Uh, and we do, <laughs> I should have hit home, but we do want that to be actual terrain height there. And then from this junction, what we can do is draw out a road that's almost parallel to that train station one. We can kind of snap into the guidelines a little bit here in order to do that. And again, I've still not hit home. <laughs> Always remember when you're adjusting terrain heights to hit home to get that in nice and smoothly. But there we go. That should that should work out nicely. So if we do just take a quick trip back to Google Earth again, back into Salisbury here, this industrial strait I think can provide quite a bit of inspiration for us. So we have got train lines running through here from the main station, uh, which is actually reasonably far away from the town centre actually in this case. But what we can do is kind of make sure that we're backing onto it a little bit. Like there's a little bit of a car park down here. I think that's an extension still of the station. Not 100% sure there. A little bit of a train yard almost. And then this industrial district, this is what we kind of want to do. So again, it's roughly grid formations, but we've got some curvy roads in here. We've got some cul-de-sacs. Uh, we've got a few connections onto the main road going through it here. And I wouldn't say it's a big main road by any means. It is just a small two-lane road there. But this is what we want to achieve. So tons and tons of warehouses and different kind of, some of them commercial outlets as well. We've got things like, yeah, lots of storage and boxes. There's tons of detailing we can do when we come to do this area. But yeah, this is the type of road layout that we want to achieve here. So coming back to it, let's go in with our roads. And yeah, as mentioned, what I would like is something that kind of follows quite closely this railway here. A bit like we saw there, but I'm only going to bring it up, I think, to that distance. And then what we can start to do is actually bend this road around as if it's almost like a kind of main collector road and we'll feed a few different housing estates off it this side as well. So again, I'm going to kind of snap into the 90 degree angles from this in order to do this. But what we can start to do is bring out some quite interesting shapes into our grid here as well. And I think what we will do is actually bring this back down into this road. So let's come out of there. We'll give ourselves a nice curve as well, because we're absolutely curves within that. And then in this side, we can have a few cul-de-sacs, I think. So we'll just bring out a connection road like this and potentially another one down like that here. 
So that kind of gives us the main layout for our industrial estate. And then we can go ahead and fill that in when we come to build that. It sits quite nicely against the rail and it's lower down from the main town centre here. So it will be nicely encased and we'll have housing districts over this side, I would add as well. Okay, so the next thing I want to come on to is, the, is this side of the collector, which will be mostly residential. We'll have parks and services, obviously schools and things like that in there. But what we want to do is start laying out the road network. And again, thinking about the old historic town centre of Salisbury, this will be grid based, but it will be much more jaggedy. And we've got in the initial town centre here so more like what we're kind of seeing in the industrial centre and certainly what we saw on google earth okay so i was going to record that and i built the whole thing and then realized that i hadn't hit record i was going to time lapse it for you but i'm terribly sorry <laughs> but i failed to do that that's actually the first time that's ever happened but here we go anyway it would have been a lot of watching me place laborious roads <laughs> So let's just talk through the design and the plan and ultimately like relate it back to what we saw on Google Earth in Salisbury. Clearly we've got our town centre here as we have already discussed. Out here is going to be the more old town historical district and this side where we've got more of those straight line roads, more of the gritty type patterns. I've left some big curvy open space areas here to add in parkland in various different locations. So we will have some nice big parks, uh, close, reasonably close at least towards the town centre here. Of course, we've got our industrial site, which will sit over here. And then this is where I'm thinking will be a more low income, low wealth area estate over this side with the train track running through it. And we may build and expand on this when we come to zone in all the buildings and that sort of thing. But for now, that gives us a nice layout there. And these roads are relatively close together. We'll get buildings all packed into here. I'm going to come back to a few things that are left into some of these big open spaces, but we do need big spaces for things like school parks and the such likes. So that is why there's a few different gaps here. Now, this is an example of one of the modern housing developments, exactly like we saw on Google Earth. I've gone through like really ridiculously curvy roads and it looks a bit strange now that the houses aren't in it. But when we get some really nice modern new build style houses in here, then hopefully it will all come together. And we've got a nice big space in here as well for a school, which I think would absolutely sit in the middle of one of these sort of modern developments. We've also added in little roundabouts for the entrances to this development as well, which is again, is another thing that I saw on Google Earth. So I felt that that made sense for these as well. And I think it adds a nice touch, kind of defines the boundary of them. Again, we've got one over here and we have just used these suburban roads to mark out where those housing developments sit. Uh, similarly over here as well we've got some of those curvy designs again with the roundabouts at the entrances and then down this side it's a little bit more gritty a little bit more natural flowy we'll probably have some of the bigger richer houses down this side I would imagine as well not too close to the highway um, but that is the overall layout and shape and we've left a few roads coming off in various different places where we can then feed them into other collectors to make other connections and smaller local road connections onto some of our bigger roads depending on what else we build in and around this. Okay, so there we have essentially almost the complete road layout for a small computer town. <laughs> so what I do want to do now today still is just place in a couple of the main unique assets that I want to place within here. So what I would like to do is a big out of town supermarket. I would like to get a couple of uniques in around the town centre and also a leisure centre as well. And then what we will do over the next couple of episodes is come in and start building out this town, which is going to be a massive project. You guys will know how long it has taken me to do Oridan. And actually, if we look at the footprint of it, it's fairly sizable. But, you know, it is meant to be a standalone town, not a tiny village, a, you know, a relatively built up town. And the town centre will be built up. We will have some couple of bits of high density residential in here as well. But most of it will be suburban, like we talked about with the old town and the new residential districts as well. So let's just have a little look at the town centre to start off with. Now, of course, we've got our pedestrian area in here. So one thing that we do want to actually make sure that we do is add a pedestrian district to it. And we'll just bring it up to over this side because we do also, of course, need to place in a service building for this area. So let's go ahead and do that so that we've got it in. And what I'm thinking is we will use one of the service points as opposed to the separate garbage and cargo points. So I'm thinking probably the large one actually here, which is pretty modern, but can sit nicely there. The, the area isn't particularly large. We probably don't necessarily need a large point here. We could get away with a smaller one, but I think for now we'll place that in and then we'll see how we get along. So in terms of key focal points around our town centre, there's a couple of different assets I would like. 
And the first one is actually the library. So let's definitely place this in. This main square in the middle here is going to be a marketplace. And we may even put a couple of funfair assets in here as if there was sort of a pop-up funfair maybe for this particular time of year. So yeah, we'll definitely do that. And that's saying it's not in the pedestrian area. So let's just make sure that's fully encompassed within there. So we've got that. Uh, I would also then like a couple of unique buildings. So firstly, actually the city hall, which I think would be placed really nicely there opposite the library at this end of the, the main plaza. And it fits perfectly into that square as well back onto the station so when you come out the station you can walk down the side of it and into the main town center here and then another one is also the shopping center which we're yet to use in Oridon. so i think this would be a nice addition over this side but what i would like to do is just centralize this so we'll just move it over a little bit with move it so it's right in the middle of this block here i need a bit of surface painter and a bit of detailing around it to fit it in but i think that goes in quite nicely there and next to it, I would also like the cinema and we can do some quite nice little bits of merging, I would add within this. So we can just pull this right up to the edge of here and then it flows quite nicely into our big shopping centre this side. And I think that's also quite a nice addition next to the library with the red brick and also something that you can see from the main town centre square here. But in general, that's the main unique assets that I do want to get in here. So the other one that I do want to touch on is the main kind of out of town shopping centre. And for that, I do want to use the hypermarket. And now because I've got game anarchy on, it does mean that my uniques are now not unique. So rather than having to use Move It and copy it from the Iron Grandpa district, where we have another one of these, I can just place it in manually myself now. So let's just move this up a little bit, because what I would like to do is obviously have quite a large car park in front of it. So let's just grab this road. And in fact, what we will do is use parking lot roads for this to create little entrances into our main shopping area. So if we bring it out and across like this, we'll bring this one up, feed it into it. Let's just bring that out further for now. We can change that back in a second and we'll bring that out straight alongside it. I don't want that connection actually in there. So yeah, we'll bring it out like that. And I think what we could do is absolutely have a back entrance into it. So we'll just connect that up that side. So let's draw this up to the edge here. And of course we have got deliveries here. So we want to respect that with a bit of detailing. What we will do is add our concrete connector road in up the back here and then we can create a bit of a yard and what i would like to do as well with this is of course move the spawn point so our trucks are actually coming out of the back of this building here which i think will be a really nice touch and we'll just put it in like that so trucks would now have to drive at the back and then we can do a nice bit, little bit of storage truck yard delivery detailing out the back of it here lots of car parks in the front again when we come to do the detail in time lapse and then the final main asset I want to touch on for now is a leisure centre. So we're going to look over here for this and I'm just going to check the terrain before I do it because we do need a relatively flat area and this area is generally flat enough. So let's just smooth out a little section here where we can bring it out into. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab just a regular two lane road for now and we can of course always change it at another point. We'll bring it out like this, this way, I think. We can create that as kind of our boundary line for it. Now, what I would like to use for this, and again, similar to the leisure centre that we saw in Salisbury, I think is actually the aquatic centre. So it can look like a nice big swimming pool for the town, that sort of thing, I think will be a nice touch here. So let's just draw that out like so. And again, lots of detailing need, needed around this to help it all kind of blend in and make sense. But yeah, I think that place would be nice just on the outskirts of the town here by this development as well. And then let's bring in some rather large car parks and we're going to use parking lot roads as always for this. And let's just draw it out this side. So I think that, that is probably plenty actually for it. And what we will do is draw this service road up the side and just connect it into the back end of the car park here. And we can use no control on this a little bit just to straighten that out. And actually to make it look even nicer, we could add in one of our concrete connector roads like this, which just makes it look like it's sort of going into a back entrance there. And I think we've got this grand entrance onto the back of it. So I think we will create some playing fields and some sports fields up here too. So let's just bring that up that way so that they can connect into anything there when we add those in, which I will do in the detailing time lapse, which is in fact coming up now. 
So again, what I will do is detail around the leisure centre, the shopping centre, and also a little bit around the town centre here, including the, the main market square and a park in this space. And then the rest of it will be on future episodes. So I will go ahead and jump into a detailing time lapse and I will be right back.
so I had told myself that this was going to be a road network episode because this was just too big an area to fill, but I have gone ahead and filled in the town centre. <laughs> but yeah, I'm quite liking how it's turned out. There is a lot of people using this train station, which is absolutely great news, and they all flood into the pedestrianised part of the city. Which, yeah, I'm really, really liking. But I think overall it's kind of come together. We've got a pop-up market here in the main town square. Obviously central statue just to frame that all off nicely. And then a little pop-up fun fair over here too. Lots of old commercial European buildings mixed in with just regular high density commercial actually. Which I think works quite well. Like we've got that sort of slightly more modern look. But they don't, they actually go together pretty well. Like this is just regular commercial here but looks relatively sort of old and similar design to some of the European ones. But just slightly different roof. Similar with these ones as well with the arched windows. I think it all kind of fits in quite nicely together. I've made sure there's little back alleys for a lot of this commercial. So we've got little roads coming in here, similar here as well. Um, so, yeah, I think it's come out all right. There's some buildings that I've clearly missed, Bob, to remove a lot of those signs. So I need to just go right through and fix some of those. But yeah, it seems to it seems to work. We've got this little smaller commercial area over here with a couple of eateries and that sort of thing. Just very small pedestrian strip of commercial activity here lots of repeated patterns there just to give ourselves nice shop fronts lots of merging as well so we get shop fronts either side in this sort of small space we come along here we've got a tiny bit of leisure which i have merged some of the larger commercial buildings in uh, right up next to the train station i have used the horrible bar because it was the one that fitted unfortunately with the horrendous palms on the top but I think I can get over that. <laughs> a little motel here in the front with its own pa patio yard. And then coming on to the bus station. So there were some car parking spaces on the back of it here. And I decided actually, rather than bobbing them off, I was going to add our own little extra car park in here with a few more spaces and just frame it off with a bit of walling. Got a little sort of rest stop here for the bus station, which I thought was kind of quite cute. Put in some sitting sims in there as well just to make it feel a bit more alive and then a couple of little cafes and shops and things to support the bus station and of course i think having an intercity bus station here is quite important we've got good access to the highway it's close to the train station so yeah it should get quite a bit of use i think and here comes the train you can see all of the people flooded in and out of that one yeah it's super busy it's super busy much less people on this blue train here <laughs> But well, that commuter cranes definitely that's the one that takes them straight into the downtown so it's no surprise really that that's particularly busy uh yeah i added in a couple of little garden areas this little park over here and then obviously coming on to the main supermarket i've done what we did in the iron grandpa district added in the signs at the corner of the roads which i think is a nice effect little loading area loading bay at the back here a couple of extra crate props and the such like fence that all off and then added in extra car parks with a couple of little trolley bays the trolleys got a little bit all over the place sticking out a couple of abandoned trolleys in the middle of the car park there which i thought was quite a nice effect just framed off with a few plant pots to give it an edge against the road we have added in all services so we've got a bus uh, depot here so when we add in bus routes which are going to take everyone all around this town so we'll have bus routes going out to all of the suburban areas and to things like the leisure center over there as well which we'll come on to and the little graveyard up that side next to the rail too um, of course we've got fire we've got police uh, we do have medical actually over here as well on this other side of the road i thought this fitted in quite nicely it's a bit more of a modern building but it goes in quite nicely and then the back of the cinema onto the shopping center here just added in a couple of low density commercial which looks like it's got sort of flats above it nice little seating area here with a little bit of tile design in front of it as well i think that all flows together quite nicely around the shopping center there yeah, I think that's come together all right. And then, of course, we have got the leisure centre over here. So I've not really done too much to this other than make it a football leisure centre. Used a couple of poles to make the goals for those. And yeah, a little five-a-side area over this side. And then a football field with some of the spectator things. So I was kind of thinking the more important matches could maybe go on this field as opposed to those two practice fields over there. So it's a little bit of a, like, swim and football <laughs> leisure centre. But I think it works quite nicely. So yeah, that was really it. So we have got an awful lot of space to build out in this area, but I hope you have enjoyed seeing how the road network was planned and laid out. And I'm super excited to start getting some residential in here and get a load more people moving around our town centre. Make it super busy. Because uh, yeah, I'm quite liking it from ground level. Quite liking it.
so that is going to be it from me for today if you have enjoyed the video likes comments and shares are really really appreciated and i would love you to drop your suggestions for this commuter town into the comments and i'd love to give it a really good name we'll probably put it out to a poll on the community tab because i'm imagining there's quite a few with you with some good ideas for this i think Oridan's the main city so this is gonna have a different name it could be a play on words i'll leave it up to you guys to make your suggestions on that but that is it from me for today so thank you so much for tuning in and i will catch you again next time bye bye